You know why people do what they do? The people who go after their stuff, what makes it worth it? It's got to be your passion. You got to love it, ladies and gentlemen. You got to love it. It's got to be what you are supposed to do. You want to sing, and even though they want to invite you to Carnegie Hall, you're going to sing to anybody that listen to you, including singing to yourself. I used to talk to my plants when nobody else would listen to me. You got to write, even if no one published your book, write because that was given to you to do. You do what it is you're supposed to. You're supposed to build something. You're supposed to create something. I don't know how to do it. Learn. Do whatever is required. Just go out there. It's possible you can get what you want. It's necessary if you want it. You got to go into action. You got to be willing to experiment. You got to be willing to fail and to succeed. You got to be willing to form and to develop new relationships. It's you. It's on you. You got to make that happen. Nobody's going to bring it to you on a silver platter and say, "Here's your dream manifested." No, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. It's difficult. Yes, right, and it's worth it. People ask, "Hey, man, you know it's you know these kids, man. It's rough dealing with them." That's right. That's right. You think peer pressure happened overnight? We went through peer pressure. I remember as a kid, some guys say, "Hey, Les, me and another fellow named Willie, lower. We were going home. Hey, man, we're going down to Goose, man, and knock off a grocery store." I say, "Look here, I don't want no part of that. I'll see y'all later." I say, "Y'all chicken." I say, "That's all right. You say whatever you want. Low stuff." I'm not chicken, man. Don't call me chicken. Now why don't you come? We didn't even ask you to come into place, man. All you do is just drive the car. That's all. I don't know how to drive that good. Well, we're trying to get Les to come. He's chicken. Hey, I'm not driving nothing. All right, Willie, don't care about what they say, man. Leave him alone. You want to go do it? You find somebody else to drive, or you drive yourself. Come on, Willie, man. Pull him. He stop. I ain't chicken. All I got to do is drive. Yeah, I said, Will, that sounds simple, man. Don't go, man. He went, and the next day we read the newspaper where, when they robbed the store, a robber came. The, when they came out running to a car, the merchant, the man who owned the store, came out just shooting wildly, and he hit the driver in the head. So peer pressure didn't just start in the 90s or the 80s. It's difficult. It is challenging for kids right now, and it's going to take. Um, some easy, simple methods to help bring them out of this madness, this insanity. No, is it hard? Yes. Let's look at what we've been doing. What has worked? What has not worked? Let's look at where we want to go. What is it that we want to produce? What is it that we want to create for our young people? And as we think about that, start experimenting with different methods and techniques to create and to produce that, and begin to believe that it's possible. Through our commitment, through our vision, through our determination, our relentlessness, because of our belief, it's possible that we can reduce the teenage homicide rate, the teenage pregnancy rate, the dropout rate. That it's possible. Looking at what kind of world are they going to be in? As we look at the global economy, that as we begin to use our collective will and genius and resources, it's possible that we can. Create an educational system that not only will test their minds with with information and facts and figures, but will teach them how to think and be creative. And what does it mean to be a human being and to value human life? And how do you make relationships work? How do you bounce back from adversity? It's possible that we can give them a curriculum that will give their lives a sense of purpose and direction and meaning, and teach them how to begin to know and operate on a higher level of being, where they become assets to our society. Rather than liabilities, what if we leave here with that kind of consciousness that it's possible, as opposed to saying we have to write this generation off? That it's possible that we were born for such a time as this and that. That maybe someone here has the idea or the method or some plan of action or an approach that can resolve many of the problems that we're facing with young people today. Whatever we have to do to save our children, it's worth it. So that brings me to the final step. That it's necessary for us to begin to look at the future and know that it's possible that we can have our dream. Yes, it is. Other people have done it. 
then we can do it. We fail a lot of times. Well, a lot of other folks fail. And eventually they came back and they succeeded. So it's possible we can have what we want. And we know that we want to get it. It's necessary that we align ourselves with people that think like we do. It's necessary. We get negative, do-nothing people out of our lives. It's necessary. We never stop learning and growing and developing ourselves. It's necessary that we never give up. We know that it's you, it's me. It's being responsible for our stuff and deciding that we're going to keep on keeping on, that we're going to find a way to win or find a way to make it happen. And we know it's hard. It's not going to be a picnic. Yes, it's hard. It's hard. And we will do it hard. And once it's, we do it hard and we go through it, we realize it was worth it. And once you discover it was worth it, it is done. It's done. It's done, ladies and gentlemen, before it happens. Well, here's what I'm suggesting to you. That when you're working, you have a wall to break through. Let's say a friend of mine who walks, he runs a marathon, and he says, when he's running the 26-mile marathon, he said, let's say that hypothetically, that 18th mile is the wall. He said, Les, when you get there and you're running, he says, everything in you is telling you to stop, to give up. Every muscle is aching. And you're saying to yourself, I can't do it. I can't do it. And you just keep on and you keep on and you keep on. It seems like you're moving at slow motion. And then eventually when you break through that 18 mile wall, then you know it's like done and you're on automatic and you glide on in and you know it's there. You know you're gonna to get to the finish line. And we've all had experiences where we were working on something and we knew it was possible and we did those things that were necessary to bring it into reality. We took the responsibility to make it happen. Other people couldn't see it. A lot of people didn't believe it. You were attacked, you were criticized. People were opposing you, but you kept on doing it. It was hard, it was rough, it was difficult, but to you, it was worth it. And eventually you got to a level you know, can nothing stop me now. I'm on the move, I'm on the move. Finally, I'm thinking about a friend of mine who is no longer operating on this dimension. His name is Jack Bowlin. He had this vision of a, of a church that would serve various types of needs for people, their supportive needs and helping them in, in recovery from drugs and alcohol and, and whatever addictions that they might be involved in. And he was known for bringing in different kinds of speakers. And over a year ago, he was diagnosed as having cancer, and he announced to his congregation that he's going to be taking chemotherapy, and that it was a possibility that the cancer would go in remission, and he was optimistic about that. And sure enough, it did for a year. And one of the things Jack always talked about is that he wanted to have his funeral while he lived. And so he invited a few friends, Wayne Dyer and myself and a few other speakers. He didn't tell us why we were there, but once we gathered there, the church, they told us in the room that Jack is going to announce to the congregation, he's bringing his doctor up, the doctor is going to say that we felt we could get, keep it in remission, it's out of remission, and he doesn't have much time left. And whatever words you want to say to Jack that you would say if he had made his transition, speak those words now. Well, we were shocked and, and we were somewhat stunned until Jack got there. They brought him in in a wheelchair and, and boy was he courageous and, and he had a strong smile and they helped him up the steps and he sat behind the podium and each of us got up and we said a few things about Jack and the impact that he made on our lives. And he said, the doctor, after announcing that Jack didn't have long, he says, doctor, he said, I accept what you say, but it's possible that that does not have to be the case. But if it is, I will enjoy life to the very last breath I take, even the chemotherapy. I will enjoy that. And Jack did, ladies and gentlemen. And when they said that all of his vital organs were failing, they called his family and his close church staff to the hospital and said he's dying. And so they came and they all gathered in the room. And Jack at that time was unconscious. And he gained consciousness 
And he looked at them and he said, with what strength he had, he said, I want to thank you all for being here. You've been a great staff to me. He looked at his sons and his daughter. He said, you've been a great family. He said, don't feel sorry for me. He said, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm looking forward to the next adventure. And he sat there for a little while, laid there, and he closed his eyes and, and he lost consciousness. About an hour and a half later, he opened his eyes and he looked at them and he said, this is embarrassing, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> they were laughing through their tears. They said, Jack, you are a character. He said, hey, I hate giving up this kind of control. So they predicted that Jack would die at the end of February. And then on the second, they said, he won't see the light of day. He will be dead by morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack died on March 4th. And we believe that even in his dying, Jack sent his congregation a message that I want to give to you with his permission. March 4th is the day he died, and we believe Jack was saying, March 4th. So I say, as you look into the future, while other people are giving up, feeling like victims, feeling powerless, becoming negative, turning on each other rather than to each other, feeling that they can't make it, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind with the mindset of that it's possible that we can save this generation. It's possible that we can create new industries, a new economy. It's possible that I can find a new profession, a new job. It's possible I can create a new life. And it's necessary that I become actively involved in becoming a positive force in my life and on the planet. And it's me, yes, it's you, it's all of us, pulling together, working together to create this brand new future. And it's going to be hard. Easy is not an option. But if it's hard, we will do it hard. Whatever is required to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. And it's worth it, yes. It's worth whatever we have to do. And once we know that, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. So I say to you, whatever your dreams are, whatever you want to do, in the spirit of Jack, march forth. This is Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy, Leslie Calvin Brown saying, it's been a plum-pleasing pleasure, as well as a privilege. Thank y'all here. Thank